Hiya, and thanks so much for joining me on Creative Photo Folk's YouTube channel. I'm Hayley, your host for all things creative photography. And in today's video, I'll be showing you how to add textures to photos of flowers to transform them from ordinary into art worthy. So if you love to shoot flowers, this one's for you. So this is the kind of image we're working towards. Now, I do not love shooting flowers. I know that they're a very popular subject. I find them a little bit dull. And so I don't have a lot of shots of flowers, but when choosing one, there are certain things you need to look out for. So in this case, we'll take a look at the original. Not a bad photo in and of itself, but what I was really looking for was for a subject that had a stem, and I was also looking for a situation where there was nothing else over the flower. So often there's some, you know, extra leaves from different bits of foliage and stuff like that. So that's the kind of image that works really well. Helps to have, you know, a little bit of leaves for character. But again, that is just personal taste. So the first thing I did to create this image was masked out that flower. Now to do that, I went to, let's do it together. I'll just make a copy of that layer and delete its mask. So I went to select subject. Now, good chance it probably won't get this right first go, especially if there are background distractions. But if you are shooting your flowers, it helps to use a whitish aperture that's wide enough to blur out the background, but not too wide that it's also blurring out parts of the foliage. So it'd be good if your foliage is quite sharp, but the background is blurry. Now this hasn't done a terrible job. It's uh, missed a few bits, so we will work on those. So now we wanna go to the object selection tool, which is accessed by hitting W, or it's the fourth on your toolbar. You can hover over it and then make sure you choose the top one, object selection. And by holding down shift, I can tell Photoshop that I want it to take a second look and add to the selection if it finds anything. That's done a decent job. There's a little bit here I don't want, so I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and drag around that and tell Photoshop I don't want that. So let's work on the leaves. So holding down Shift, let's see how it goes there. Leaves will be a little bit confusing to it, but that's pretty good. And then just this final leaf at the bottom. And for some reason it lost those last leaves when I did that. So, that looks quite good. I might just hold down Alt or Option and drag around this little section here to get rid of whatever that is. There, looks great. Now we can add our layer mask by hitting the little rectangle with a hole in the middle down the bottom of your layers panel. And here we've got our flower. And I think it has missed a little bit down the bottom here. So I'm just going to load my brush tool, pop it to white to save to paint back in and then paint over that. So now we have our flower. Hopefully yours has been just as easy to cut out. Now we're going to start adding our textures. So I just wanna talk a little bit about how to get textures. So I shoot all my own and basically what I'm looking for, these are some that I shot at a house I was house sitting recently. And these were just tables, some walls, bits of furniture, some crystals I found, spider webs, bits of bark. And so these are the kinds of things that you can use as textures. That was actually a deer antler. So all sorts of things can be used as textures as long as they've got a little bit of grain to them. And so when I was creating this image, I literally just grabbed the first textures I could find to see what I could make with them. You can get a little bit more exacting than that, but that's just what I wanted. I did to show you how easy this can be. So the first texture I grabbed was, I shot some water, there were some leaves and rocks underneath. So that is all that is. Then I have actually blurred it a touch. I thought the details were too crisp. So you can do that sometimes. I just went to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And I just chose something kind of low just to make sure that the details were a little less crisp. Then I've added a hue saturation over top of that. So what I've done is gone to my little half pie adjustment layer and clicked hue saturation. Then in the box that came up, I've played with the color and I haven't touched the saturation or lightness, but you could. And then what I've done with that, that adjustment layer is just clipped it. So it's affecting only this texture and not anything else on my timeline, including the flowers underneath. 
And you do that by holding Alt or Option and just clicking between that adjustment layer and the layer you're working on. And now it means that adjustment is only affecting this texture layer. Then I like to layer textures. So the next texture I used was this one. So that is actually some ice that I was walking on over in Canada. And again, I have changed the color of that. I've made it pink. And the final texture I used, which is at a low opacity, so I'll bring it back up, was just a bit of a wall. So how do we apply these textures? Well, so let's say we're in Lightroom. Let's say I'm working with, just choose one at random. And I will go to Photo, Edit In, and then Edit In Adobe Photoshop. That will throw it over into Photoshop, bring it up here. And it'll open in a separate tab to the document you're working on. So I'm just going to hit V. So V is my move tool. And then I can grab it and drag it up onto this other tab and drop it down. And then we can drag that into position. Now to get it to apply over our flower, we start to play with our blend modes. So our blend modes are found under the word normal at the top of your layers panel. And they tell a layer how to blend with the layers below it. So you can just sort of run through to see if there's any you like. And you can see how they blend. So sometimes they blend underneath, sometimes they blend over top. And I'm just going to choose for the sake of this example something like maybe overlay. And then I can drag down the opacity by hovering my mouse over top and dragging it down. The other thing you could do is then pop that layer, if you wanted, underneath your flower layer so that now it's only beneath it. I don't mind having it over top because it then gives the same color and texture to the flower, but that's totally personal taste. Anyway, that was just an example. I'm going to go back to the ones I chose originally. So we had this water layer, which I made green and had blurred a little bit. Now that is set to overlay, which is one of my favorite blend modes to use. Then I layered on top of that the ice that was pink. And you can see now why that color makes sense because it blends nicely with the color underneath. And I really like that texture. It's quite cool. And then my final, so that was set to soft light at 100% my final texture which really roughed it up and I think that really helps this one I took some of the color out of it so I brought down the saturation which I often do with textures I sometimes even make them black and white and so then we have our three textures over top which is pretty good but it, the flowers isn't totally blending so that would be our next step so there's a couple of things I did to fix that first thing I did was added a curves layer and you can see what that's doing. Basically, I just took some highlights out of it. I thought the highlights were a bit too much. So by dragging down the very top right, I can affect the highlights and make them a bit duller. So that was just affecting the flower only, not the textures. Then we will pop up to above the textures where I made some changes and I darken the whole thing up. Again with the curves, just by pulling down the middle. I added another curves to create a vignette. So what I did there, was pulled it down again in the middle but this time I used a layer mask and I painted away the center so that the light was still on the flower drawing your eye to the flower and away from the edges you can see what that layer mask looks like here next I did some cloning so this real this little spot here was bothering me so I got rid of it now how you would do that is you would add a new layer over top of everything you've done so far and making sure that you're happy with everything you've done so far because this will be a little bit difficult to change later on. And then I used my healing tool, I think. The healing tool is found under J, but I'm going to choose the normal healing tool. So it's this one here. And I will find a bit of the image that's relatively similar. So we'll just grab something like this. And I'm going to hit Alt or Option and then click that spot and then pop over to the area I want to fix and tap it once and now that area is gone. So what else did I do to this image? This is now really down to personal taste. I have put a color fill over the top that is white. I've set it to overlay in a very low percentage to brighten this up. I've put a hue saturation and played with the colors quite a bit to give it a pinky tone and to make that flower blend a little better. And then I have done another one where I've dragged down the hue saturation and just affected that color a little more. I think that's much nicer. Then another hue saturation where I have just played with the colors a little bit. So really just a bunch of hue saturations to see if I could get a nicer result. But really it's just a matter of experimentation. I've given you the very base technique, which is simply to bring in a texture, 
change the blend mode and give it a new background and a new overlay. But as I said, you could also just put that texture behind the flower so it wasn't over top and then you could mess with the flower's colors so that it fit better. Now, one other thing I like to do is the is to make a copy of the flower layer. So I'll pop right back down to the bottom where the flower layer was and press Control or Command J to make a copy of it. Then I'm going to drag that to the top of my layers panel. So the flower is now over top and you can see what that looks like now with the texture behind. And I'm going to drag down the opacity. So that just gives us a little bit of that flower back in front of everything we've done. So it's at 20%. You can see it's not making a huge difference, but enough. So you can see how this one is a bit blended a bit better, but this one tends to pop a little more. So that's another little trick that you can do. Now we're just going to pop over into a second example. I won't do the whole thing with you, but I will sort of go through what it looked like and what it looks like now. So this is what it initially looked like. I think it's a really nice picture of a rose. There's quite a lot of distraction in the background, however, and I think the colors are a bit extreme. So this is the result I ended up with. And you can see it's got that much more fine art feel that is perfect for creating a beautiful print of a flower to hang on a wall, whereas this is simply a picture of a flower. So this is really the purpose of using textures. So let's work through all these layers together. This one I did a little bit differently. Basically, I put a layer of black at the back and that's at 50% because what I wanted to do was keep some of this background, just a little bit of it. So I made a selection of the flower, added a layer mask, but what I've done to that layer mask is control the density. And so I can make the layer mask a little bit less opaque, I guess is the word. And so I had that density at about 50%. Then I have taken out a lot of saturation from that flower because it was very bright and made some very minor changes to the colors. I've darkened down the edges of the flower so it fit a bit better into its new background. Then I started to add my textures. So I added this texture that looks like, I think it's that table that we were using before. Now that's only at 97% at soft light, which is why it looks a bit weird. And then I added a hue saturation to brighten that up. So let's pop our flower back in. Then a second texture, which darkened it down, but it gives it kind of a nice grainy texture. Then a final texture, which you can see it's just masked over the flower because I wanted to make it blend into the scene a bit better. It was a bit contrasty here. Then I actually used a curves layer to brighten the center of the flower, just to draw the eye there because it was starting to get lost in its background. Used a levels just to affect the brightness of the background and bring that up a little more cloned away this spot that was annoying me in the original image and that's the final image so that was the before and after really simple as you can see it's just layering textures over top and then playing with things like saturation and brightness hopefully this helps you see more potential in your flower photography and if your mojo has been taking a vacation this might be the perfect project to reignite it if you enjoy these creative photography tutorials let me know with a like and subscribe to encourage me to keep creating more. See ya!